Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for the ability to know that you love us and the ability through your Holy Spirit that's in us. We just praise and thank you, and we thank you for those who have listened by the technology. God, be with those who may be sick or doing other things that won't allow them to be here at church or any church, and we just thank you. Now, Holy Spirit, open up, your, open up our understanding that we may know you more and be able to walk and embrace your love. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Our subject today is going to be on what is true. In the Gospels, during the time that they were getting ready to crucify Jesus and they was taking him to court, and Pilate was talking to Jesus, and he asked Jesus whether well, he's the king, and Jesus was talking and mentioned truth. And Pilate ended the statement with, what is true? So we're going to define biblically what truth is, as well as just normal what truth is. I do believe that truth is a absolute for sure thing, whatever that truth may be. And it is somewhat impossible for real truth to be con to d contrary than what it is. I would like to give a simple explanation, I mean, example here. I have before me salt and pepper. At this point, we have to use a little faith because we don't actually know, even though these look what pepper and salt might be, until we taste it, we're going to have to use a little faith, especially if I go and ask, and I did ask Eileen to give me this, and she gave me this. So in faith, I'm believing that there's salt in here and there's pepper. But just acknowledging that fact does not mean necessarily that I will use the salt and pepper. And in order to give this truth a specific fact personally for me, or any individual, whatever the truth is, then I'm going to have to embrace it in a personal way to where it affects my choice and it affects me personally. And to do that, then I'm going to have to embrace it or I'm going to have to put myself in a position to actually use it in a personal way. I kind of have sworn off table salt because of my physical issues they say I have. So even if I go somewhere and salt's there, which is a truth, and by faith I still believe it's salt that's in there. So therefore, I'm not going to use that salt on my food. But I like pepper, and I use a lot of pepper, so I will use the pepper. So the difference is one truth I embrace personally, both truths by faith I embrace that both of one salt and one pepper. Is that making sense? Okay. Unfortunately, in our society, and that's just not United States, but I'd say overall in our society, Sometimes we assume the fact that I have an understanding about truth or I'm willing to brace a truth because it's there in front of me. That means personally it's attached to me. But it's not necessarily true. Most of us, I wouldn't say most of us, there's a lot of us that will admit and believe that God exists. And Either that's a truth that God does or he doesn't. We have found out by faith, as well as it's kind of hard to ignore some of the natural facts of that, but you can ignore that and give other reasons why something exists if you don't want to accept God. In order to ex truly accept God, if we're talking about God, the Bible, which he wrote and used other people to write, does use and gives 
a way to embrace the truth. In John 4, verses 23 to 24, if it's possible, could someone read that? It will share a truth with us about truth. And then we will talk a little bit more about it and see what it has to say. John, chapter 4 in John, verses 23 to 24. Go ahead. So here we see that God, through Jesus, made a statement on how we must approach God is through the spirit and through truth. Now, we really don't have any ability over the spirit. God has given us a spirit. He is a spirit. So that's something God is going to have to initiate in you. And the Bible says that he does, that he has gave, given everyone a measurement of faith. So you have basic faith to embrace this truth that God exists and that he is the spirit and that God has breathed his spirit into us. And we know from reading Genesis that Adam and Eve did have the spirit of God in them, and they had a very true, uh, really neat relationship with God. But because they did not obey what God asked them to do, they began to embrace a death in their spirit where there was a separation in their relationship with God that was different from when the original relationship God had with them. And as we study more, we realize that when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he mentioned that your spirit, the spirit of a human being, uh, had to be reborn again. Those things are really not in our control to do. They're in the control of God to do. And since he established those guidelines, then it's up to him to establish that truth that your spirit will be born again in a belief that God exists. Once we embrace that truth, the same as taking salt or pepper and actually start embracing that truth personally, then you can benefit from the truth that God now has put into your heart, into your human realm, and now it is, you are capable of embracing this truth of God that now lives in you, and you can do it on a personal level that you could not do before. Even though you might had an intellectual understanding or an intellectual truth that you did consider God exists. But now that God, through you asking him in your life and receiving the work that Jesus Christ did by dying and being obedient to the Father and raising from the dead, now your spirit can be reborn again, and now you get his nature who will now live in you and allow you to take ownership to being a daughter or son of God. Now that truth begins to be installed in you and you can walk in those truths, even though before you might have accepted or believed in those truths, you now have a greater ability to embrace those truths that you could not necessarily do before because it has to be done in a spiritual reality 
of God now living in you who you believe. Did that make sense? Now, now that I have this truth, will I apply that in every area of my life? As a Christian, we usually believe that we can. But just believing you can is a little bit different than actually applying that truth. Truths are hard to apply when they come along with difficulties and things that are contrary to what you would like in your life, such as sickness, such as all of a sudden you're told that you no longer will have a job in a few months. Things that come into your life that may be true that you now have to embrace because this is going to be a reality. If you don't embrace that, then it may be a greater issue and a frustration to you if you don't want to embrace this new truth is coming to your life. Now, as a Christian, you can now embrace a new truth that says God is in you and that he wants to help you and embrace some truths that are not necessarily good, such as being sick, such as getting laid off a job that you had already went out and bought a car and thought everything would be okay, and all of a sudden, nothing to do with you. The company gets sold, and they decided there's some offices that they're going to get rid of, and it has to be one of your things. So now you're having to embrace the truth that no longer you have control over, but the Bible says, as I now say, okay, God, help me to embrace this truth Help me with the situation that I'm now faced with because of these truths that are coming into my life. That God says that your burdens are his burden. Now, it's one thing to say that truth and even believe that truth, but it's another to do that now embrace that truth. Now take that truth of God being with you and see how he's going to help you deal with these new uh, challenges that are in your life now. Now, not only did he say, said that he will be with you, he says that you can have joy all the time and not a kind of joy that is necessary emotionally, and there's a lot of good, great joys that are emotionally, but when things are a tragic or difficult, then it's kind of hard to embrace that joy. As a matter of fact, I would say it's almost kind of human impossible to embrace those joys on your own when you're dealing with these real situations. And even though you want, even though you can use mind over manner and begin to repeat things that this is going to be okay, but unless real peace show up, everything's still the same. So in order for you to really have that real joy, then you're going to have to embrace this truth personally, like adding the pepper or salt. You're going to have to embrace this truth on a personal level and then watch and expect not hope, nothing wrong with hope, but expect God will answer because he said he would. And if he said he would, he is true. So therefore, something has to happen to help you deal with this situation. And I'm now going to expect, now I may not know necessarily how he's going to do this and what joy is going to look like in this situation, but I'm going to expect it. I'm going to Lock my mind on that God is going to fix this one moment and one day at a time. And in my spirit realm, then I need 
to begin to be sensitive to that joy that's going to be in my spirit that begins to take away some of the pressure. Now, doesn't necessarily take away the pain. I still may be in pain. I still may still have the uh, a job notice is still coming. And matter of fact, each day only draws me closer to that reality. But still, I'm now feeling in my spirit that God is giving me a peace. And there's this little joy that begins because I realize I'm not sure how this is going to work out. But God is going to do something so the weight of that truth of decision that's coming on me will not weigh me down and will not drive me into depression because I'm expecting God to help me deal with this situation and to bring peace and truth. Now, God says, if I ask a mountain to move, I'll be quite honest. I believe that. But I find that hard to really happen to see a physical mountain move because I say it to move. And we're even talking about in a given situation that where, you know, me just not walking out of the door and telling the mountain to move, but there's a situation where I need to move a mountain. But God is telling me this truth if I believe and expect, then He will do something. Can I embrace that truth, especially when this may be the first time that I've ever been in a situation that is real and I'm hopeless and I have nothing I could do, I've done everything I could do and the situation still hasn't changed, that I'm faced with this situation that God said I can move that mountain. So. How do I believe and make this mountain move? Well, first of all, it's not about what you have to do. Okay? The only thing logical for you to do is accept there is a mountain in your way that needs to be moved. But the first thing I got to really come to grips with is there's nothing I can do to move that mountain. Personally, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to change the situation. But at the same token, I am expecting God is going to send something that will make a difference and something that will change in me to where I'm not fearful, even though I don't like the different situations I'm now in. But this fear and this anxiety is beginning to fade because I'm totally embracing what God put in me. He put his spirit in me, and I am beginning to embrace this, expecting and realizing, one, I understand I can't do anything about it. So there's no need in me stressing on what I can do or can't do. So it's accepting that I, I'm just not going to be able to change that. But now I start seeing and feeling God moving in me and bringing situations, even through people, through uh, modern technology, all these different things that God can bring into the environment that will produce a change in my situation. But while I am being processed in this situation, I need to totally enjoy that God is with me and enjoy that he will. He, it's impossible, according to the word of God, for God not to come on the scene and help me when I've asked him, and he is my father and my healer, not to help me through the situation. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean all of a sudden I'm healed. Now, that is what we would want, or all of a sudden, that job that I don't have, all of a sudden, I got a better and a new job. Now, that may happen, but in the meanwhile, if it doesn't happen right then, all I have to left is my faith and my trust in what God is doing in me and promised me to take this load 
off of me. Now, if I say I believe that, then I turn around, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I go on the internet, and I look up this problem, because it's like you find a lot on internet about certain things. And the things that they share about this situation seems to be contrary that God is able to do something. They just gave me a bunch of facts, a bunch of things that just really made it more of an issue. Now I have a choice to either accept that truth or logic that's supposed to be. Well, I say, okay, that's their per perception of this. And I won't say that those things aren't true. But it's still, I don't have to embrace this. And right now, I'm in a crossroad where I either embrace doubt, because this knowledge now makes me doubt God's ability. Because I'm you're saying all these facts and all these things over here that can happen, and then it's telling me the symptoms and all that kind of stuff. Or I can say, I still going to accept that God is going to work with me, and I'm beginning to speak that those effects, even though I might have some of those, or that situation of not knowing what job I can get right now, I'm going to start speaking what God says can be for me. So I'm going to start speaking health. I'm going to start telling myself and encouraging myself that God is going to help me get through this. So I begin to encourage myself. I begin to lift myself up based on the truth of what God says he will do and the truth that he's in me and that he's going to help me. And I begin to speak that and I begin to grab a hold of that to help me get through rather than grabbing a hold of the door of doubt because all this other information is contrary to what God says can happen. Is that making any sense? That the Bible calls us when you are in a fight and it's more of a situation fight and a fight of what choice or what decision am I going to embrace? Am I going to embrace all this other over here? Or will I embrace what God says can happen and what he desires to happen? So I have to choose now and continually as those things pop back up in my life, which one will I embrace and which truth will I begin to trust in? What God says, even though I'm still struggling with some real issues, that I can find peace and I can find hope that will help me get through that day, will help me get through of being excited now that I get a chance to go look for a new job and I've asked God the kind of job I want, the kind of things I need to do, how much money, all these things that I'm asking God to open up for me, expecting that he will do that. Now, the expecting part helps me deal with the time that God may take to process these realities, because sometimes they don't always happen right now. Sometimes it may be a year journey that you're going through, but each day, if I expect God to do something, I'm embracing this pepper or this salt now, and I sprinkle it on, and I'm going to, if it's really true, and if it's really salt or really pepper, when I taste whatever I put it on, then I should get some ref uh, effects of the taste of salt. So I'm saying, if I'm really trusting God, and if I'm going in the direction that the Spirit that's in me, then I start to get some effects into my daily life that shows me God is here. 
that shows me that things are going to get better. And that in this moment of my going through these issues, that God is helping me to process it a day at a time. And that I'm calling on him and I'm dependent upon him to show up and to answer and to deal with this situation. And I began to not accept anything that is not an answer to what I prayed for and an answer to help me get through these difficulties. I just, you just got to accept and you keep focusing on the promises that God has given you and the fact that he's helping you right now in that situation and let that be enough. And all of a sudden you begin to embrace this peace that is tangible now in your spirit. And I began to embrace and I began to walk in this truth because God is faithful and God can help and change situations. And in that, when I get through it, and I will get through it based on his truth, I have a greater strength. My faith has increased. And now I have something that I did not have before is a testimony of the truth that he did in this situation. And that testimony can continue to encourage me and maybe help someone else that's going through something else. That is one of the wonderful things of knowing God is true. Knowing that if I, pers- if I embrace this truth that God says will happen, and it must happen, because if it doesn't happen, then it God really truthful. So it will happen. Now, what I don't want to do is put it in a box and say, well, it has to be this way, that way. But then I get in trouble because it may not look like what I would like it to look like. It may not come as soon as I want it. It may not even taste what I thought it would taste like. But I know it is what God said he would do. And that is what I'm going to do. And that will be a renewing of my mind in perceiving his truth versus the truth that's on the outside of him. Both could be truthful. I won't say those facts and those things are not truthful. But which one is greater? Well, he said he's great. He said that he would never forsake you. And when I need to really walk and believe for that truth, it's definitely when I'm in a situation that demands that. All the more reason I need to step over in that realm and watch God work for me. And what I have to do in the very most important thing is truth is truth. Salt in this bottle is salt and pepper is pepper. But these truths won't really help me if I don't personally embrace them and use them. That is the difference. That I have to personally use them and trust it and then watch God do things. That's a must. Actually, to get very technical with it, is actually a requirement. In order to embrace truth, there are some requirements that you need to do, and in one, in which I just said, trust God, embrace the truth, don't let it go. Those are part of the requirements for you to really fully embrace all that God has for you. If you just believe it because it's written and it's in there, but if you don't make it personal, how can it benefit you? even though you may be saved, even though the Holy Spirit is in you. But see, you haven't embraced it personal, so therefore it's not going to be able to benefit you in the ways it can unless you make it personal, and then you make it where you begin to embrace that truth. 
So that is one of the requirements, something you have to personally do. And even though people can pray for you and you can pray for others, but at some point you personally have to embrace that prayer for yourself and that you have to embrace that truth for yourself. And then it will begin to bring forth the fruit God said it would bring. And I would just like to leave that with everyone. And if God is who he is, then there will be plenty of, of, of facts and realities that will verify that truth in your personal life. That you will be able to actually embrace. You may not be able to share that in a way that it, someone else can get it. You know, you could tell the story, but they may not get the excitement or whatever that you're saying. But it is something that you personally have to embrace in order to receive everything that God wants. And all you have to do is do it at a moment at a time and know that God loves you and he's for you. Lord, we just thank you for this time and we thank you for the opportunity to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen.